seven things that credit unions care about. Let's dive into it. All right, my friends, credit unions are a hot topic. We've been covering it a lot on the channel lately. Did you know that there's really seven things I would say that they care about a lot? And what are they looking at with a credit profile? What matters to them? That's what I was hoping to uncover and peel back with you here today. At the top of the list, we gotta talk about this. Out of the gates is gonna be check systems. They are gonna care at a, at a ranging degree, depending on the credit union, how many essentially inquiries you have or hits you have on your check systems. You can pull your check systems reports for free. All the links are on uh, wallamonkey.io under the uh, bank resources page. We've got all that laid out for you. You can even dispute items. You can do all that from there. We've got all the links for you, but they're gonna care about check systems. The baseline I would say would be probably five over the last 24 months. That's when banks start to get a little weary, um, but definitely over seven. And some of them, they're even more sensitive than that. But if you're running into getting denied or declined for membership based on check systems, you gotta stop. You gotta take a time out <laughs> and wait, let everything cool off and come back to the table in like another six to 12 months, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, check systems is a big driving force behind membership into the credit unions, which everything else stems off of, okay? So check systems is key. Let's start there. Next is inquiries, okay? This is another, I'd say this is um, important across the field, across the spectrum of banks and credit unions. With credit unions, uh, they tend to care more. I would definitely say somewhere in the five to seven range is getting up into the upper band of too many. Uh, whereas with some banks, you know, like BMO Harris, Cinebis, those banks really seem to not be as sensitive. Um, but on the credit union side, definitely yeah, they are. So I would say five or less is where you wanna be at, right? When you're looking to uh, actually pull the trigger on an application and, uh, and apply. Number three is your DTI or debt to income ratio. Great example of this would be Navy Fed who uses it at least really, really importantly as a metric for your very first credit card. But I would argue they do look at it long-term, but it's very important out of the gates with Navy Fed, which is why you see some people who are 18, you know, uh, fresh out of school and uh, they get a $20,000 credit card limit. And then you got a 40 year old who's rebuilding his credit. He can't even get a $500 credit limit. That's why, because they tend to look at DTI. So a lot of uh, credit unions heavily look at debt to income ratio and where that's at. We want it to be low. We want it to be lower than 30%. But I'd say 30% is really like the, the breaking line. Much like utilization. I know for the longest time people were talking about utilization 30%. I think it's more like 10%. If you're around 10% and you're in the mid 700s, you're gonna get a lot more. You're gonna go a lot further than uh, what somebody else would if they just had a little bit more usage. Okay, and that's the next point I wanna bring up is utilization. It's not on this list, but this is like a bonus. Utilization does matter, but not as much as you would think. DTI is more important. I would argue than utilization is for the credit unions, right? Because I've seen some people now with 50, 60% utilization, you know, like somebody just got approved for 12,500 with BECU, Boeing, and they had a 58% utilization. That's not as important, but it definitely deserves to be talked about on the list. DTI, way more important. Number four, you're gonna have ranging levels and degrees of forgiveness for past bad behavior that is still on your credit profile. What do I mean? Bankruptcies, collections, charge-offs, any sort of charge-off really, or delinquency. You're gonna have a ranging, you know, a ranging degree of is it okay or is it not okay? And then, you know, some will fit there in the middle. But with some of these banks, it matters a lot to where they will deny you for membership. They will deny you right out of the gates because some of them hard pulled just on the membership side. But when it comes to credit products, if you've got delinquencies, this does matter a lot more with a credit union. So if it's a credit union like Navy Fed to where we can go in and build a relationship, that tends to matter less because DTI trumps all with them, uh, especially going in with the, that first card, right? So anyways, we want to be mindful that if we've got derogatory marks that that might hold us back with some of these credit unions, right? Like I said, you're not gonna really know until you start trying to pull the trigger and uh, looking at other data points and things that we're collecting uh, within the community, that'll give you an idea of where you're, where you might kind of land with it, but um, it does matter with them. Number five, and this is a big one. Keep in mind, this list is not in order because otherwise I'd probably put this in DTI closer to the top, but how much total credit limit you have. Total available credit, TAC, uh, is really, really important. And this is something that we, we bring up in a lot of videos actually, because we've got examples from the community itself, but you know, guys will get asked, why are you getting this card? Like point blank, you know, they'll talk to the underwriter or somebody that they're following up with at the credit union and they'll just ask them, why are you getting another card? We see that you got all this credit, you're not even using it. Why are you getting ours? Why do you think you deserve ours? Those sorts of questions will come up. So at minimum, you gotta be able to answer that if you've got a large amount of available credit and your utilization is especially below like 10%, you're gonna get asked this question, okay? How do we fit in? and they just wanna make sure that you're gonna actually use their products 
and you're not just chasing after, you know, 50, 60 cards and you're not gonna use them, right? So expect that question to come up. And again, that is an important one. Okay, number six is just your overall credit report and how it looks, right? So this is gonna be everything. This is gonna be average age of account. This is gonna be utilization. This is gonna be what installment loans you've got, if any, on the report. Do we have mortgages? Do we have auto loans? Do we have any of those things? They're gonna be looking at the age that you're at because again, especially in America, it's like at this age, most people are married. At this age, they get their first house. At this age, they got cars. At this age, we get dogs. Then we have kids, right? So there's like this projected life path that most people have. And you better believe that credit unions, big banks, everybody looks at that, that life path or that trajectory and see is like, okay, well, wait a second, this is kind of weird. This is a 40 year old guy or this is a 50 year old guy and he doesn't have these things that we would expect everyone to have by this point. So that actually might work against you. Sometimes it benefits you and you get these fat limits, but other times it might work against you. So they are gonna look at the overall profile in its complete entirety and see kind of where you fit within you know the, the norm and I guess what they would assume you would be at by your demographical age, right? So that's a big one to keep in mind as well. Lastly, number seven, is the state that you live in. You might not think that this matters, but it does because what they pull up is geographical data over the top of earnings data. So we can map out every single state what the average income is. They can do this with the, um, the Census Bureau data. So they can figure out like, okay, how much credit should we extend to somebody in Tennessee or Kentucky is gonna be vastly different than somebody that we would extend credit to in LA or in California as a whole, right? Why? California is a much more uh, expensive state. The fee to actually open a business in California is $800 a year, even though I think it's still being waived right now. To be a foreign entity, it's $800 as well. well. I think the most expensive state to open up an LLC in is California. So based on that, we're gonna give out a much larger limit, I would assume, in California than we would in, like I said, Georgia, Kentucky, Tennessee, right? North Carolina, South Carolina. So based on the census data, they are going to be making decisions on how much they are going to and willing to extend to somebody that lives in those states. Now they might d dive deeper than that and look at the, the county that you're in, the city that you're in and base it on that as well because I think that they've got a good amount of access to census data within that state. That said, they might not go that deep. Just think of it at the state level at minimum and that is gonna dictate the, uh, the size and some of the limits that you're gonna absolutely get. So anyways, there you have it. Seven things I think are really important when you're looking at getting involved with credit unions and pulling the trigger. If you think I missed something or if you wanna add and share, comment below, let us know what you think and uh, stick around, watch a couple more videos on the channel if you wanna help us grow. That seems to help lately with the algorithm. So thanks again, we'll catch you in the next one. Hey, you should subscribe. 60% of you are not subscribed yet, right there. Okay, bye. Monkey!